Good evening, everybody. Welcome to New Heart Healing and Recovery. It's the ministry of Westgate Chapel, where we minister to people who are broken and hurting, people who are stuck in addiction and other life-controlling issues, and we minister to you with the Word of God that we believe will set you free and heal you and make you whole again. Everything you hear here on Monday night, whether it's here in the main room in the opening or whether it's in your group, is born out of that belief that your healing comes out of a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hey, just a couple things to get out of the way. In your bulletins, you might notice there's a little extra flyer in your, in your um, I think that's what we call them, bulletins that you get in here on Monday night. And it's talking about our New Heart Ministries YouTube channel. So give us, a, give us a look. I don't, I don't know how that works. Facebook is likes. What is YouTube? So you just watch it? Watches. Give us views, likes, whatever. Yeah. And oh, you do have to subscribe? We don't charge you nothing. I don't know if YouTube does. New Heart don't charge you nothing. Okay. There's some new stuff to look at on there. Thank you, Sean. Sean did that as his phase one project, put that flyer together. So that was awesome. Thank you. We're going to get the word out, and, and a lot of people are going to hear the good news on YouTube when they look up New Heart Place, and they watch some videos on there and some different blogs and some great content that we have on there. You know, every now and then, there's something that you have to, you have to do, and, and you think you got away, and you didn't have to do it, right? It's kind of like when you have a birthday, and you think nobody knows, but somebody knows. So Ricky, she didn't get here on time because she had to take her kid to, down there. So we're just gonna sing a quick happy birthday to Ricky. Everybody, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ricky. Happy birthday. You just don't get away with it around here, huh? You just don't get away with it. Um, trying to think if there was anything else I was supposed to remember to say before I get started. Did anybody else walk up to me and say, say something? No? Okay, I don't want to forget and make you feel like I didn't care. <laughs> yeah, Alpha tonight. We'll, we'll get to that, Joe. So I, I want to read something, a, a story to you out of Ephesians. Chapter, well, not really a story, but a piece of scripture out of Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 4. If you have your phones or your Bibles, you can go there. If not, just follow along and listen carefully. This is the word of God. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That last verse there, verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them is one of those verses that just makes me go, okay, okay, so what, what is it? What, what, are the, what, what is it that we're going to walk in? I'm, I'm excited to hear the rest of it. Kind of like a story I want to tell you. We were camping one year, and I may have told this story in here before, but it's a great story for this topic that I'm talking about tonight. We were camping one year, and we liked to go camping and fishing when our kids were young, and they just loved it. And we were camping at this one spot that had a little cove where we would go fishing, and there was a little point sticking out on one part of the cove that you could walk around that point, and you could fish out in the open water of the lake. Okay? Joe knows this Bach Miller Cove, uh-huh. 
It, it's a place that we both know from Southern California. But anyway, I had my family there, right? And my son, I was teaching my sons to fish. They weren't really old enough to, but I was just trying to anyways. And they weren't that interested in it either. So it got to a part of the day where it was getting in the evening, and I knew if I could go around that point and fish on the other side at this point in the day, there's going to be a bite there, and there's going to be much bigger fish over there than the little trout that we're catching. But I got my son, my two sons, you know, they're with me, and my daughter's kind of over there with my wife. My two sons are kind of my responsibility, so I don't really want, but finally I just can't handle it anymore. I know I got to go out there and get that big fish, you know. So I walk around the point, and it's just a little ledge, literally a foot wide of rocks, and you can walk around the ledge. Or you can go up over a hill that's about 30, 40 feet high and go down the other side and get on the other side of the point. So I, I shimmied around the ledge, and I got about halfway, and my son's calling out me, Dad, I want to go. And I said, no, no, just wait over there and keep fishing right there. I'll be right back. So I got around the corner, around the end of the point, and got my line in. And I, I didn't have the line in more than 30 seconds. I heard a scream at the top of the hill. My son had decided that he would, instead of shimming around on the little ledge, he would climb up the hill and go over the top and come down the other side to me. But there was only one problem. While going across the top of the hill, he hit a bush that had a hornet's nest in him. And all the hornets came out and decided to sting him over and over. And he was screaming, and he screamed, and he ran off the ledge, off the end of that, that little hill. I'll tell you the rest in a minute. Okay, it's another one of those stories where somebody just stops and you're like, why would you stop this story there? So let's get back to the first story. Don't worry, I will finish it. I'll get, I won't leave you hanging. Oh, that was a good one. And you guys didn't even get it. Anyways, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Then it goes on into some other stuff, but I, I want to, I've done some exploring and I've done some reading and some prayer and some seeking the Lord on this whole good works that he had prepared beforehand before me. I believe with all my heart that becoming a pastor, becoming a resident director, did you notice it says that on my shirt? That was a nice gift from the New Heart Council for my 10 years. They bought me a whole set of five of these shirts. So when I look in the mirror at the end of the day and I'm really tired, I go, oh, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> Back to the story. So what's this walking out thing? See, I firmly believe that, that sometimes we get into the Bible, we get into the Word, we get saved, and we start trying to find out what it's like, you know, what it means to be a Christian. And somehow we get sold on this idea that it's just a bunch of rules and lists you know, to, to follow things to do and things not to do. And that if you somehow are good enough at this, if you do enough of the things you're supposed to do and you don't do enough of the things that you're not supposed to do, that somehow you're good enough and you're saved and God loves you and Jesus, you know, calls you his own. And, and I, I got lost in that for the first three years that I was saved. I got lost in that very frustrating pursuit of checking off the list and trying to make sure I was doing everything right. But I, I've learned over time, I, I've had the Holy Spirit and many good men and, and women teach me over time, and I finally learned that what God is really looking for is nothing more than just a response to his love. See, twice in this passage I just read you, it talked about the great love with which he loved us. God loves you so much. And maybe for some of you where you are tonight, maybe because something that you've done, maybe because of something that's been done to you, it doesn't feel like that. Just being real, it doesn't feel like God really loves me that much. It doesn't change the truth one bit. It does not change the truth that the enemy doesn't want you to hear or believe or receive. And that is that, yes, God does love you. He loves you so much that in the verse that everybody who ever lived has heard at least once, God for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He allowed his son to come and be a sacrifice for us as the as the crowning act of love, as the most loving act that anyone could ever do. Is it, that's not me beeping, is it? Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> he loves you. That question is settled from the beginning of time. As a matter of fact, it says that question is settled for you personally 
From before you were even formed in your mother's womb, he loved you. Okay? I hope you guys hear me. I hope I've said it enough times. I hope it's at least starting to become real to you. I hope it's at least pushed out some of the lies that you've believed for so long. He loves you, no matter what. No matter where you've fallen short, he loves you. That's super important because I believe that God says that if you believe that, there will be a response in you. It will have an effect on you if you believe that God loves you. Okay? I believe that the effect that it will have on you if you believe that God loves you is the walking out these things that, where it says walk in them at the end of, of verse 10 there. Walk in them. I believe the secret to walking in them, I'm still going to get to the them, I know you're waiting, but the secret to walking in them is believing that God loves you and allowing that love to have an effect on you, to change you, to soften your heart, to cause you to forgive. Oops, I'm going ahead of the list I have here. See, here's some of the things that God says we need to walk in. These are the thems. I'm going to read the verse one more time. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God gives you a love that enables you to walk in them. He prepares them beforehand for you to walk in. The only thing left is to walk in them. It's kind of like when somebody prepares a meal and you go over to your, their house, you're a guest. You don't bring nothing. You didn't work on the meal. You, you didn't, do, didn't prepare or create anything. They told you, just show up. We want to feed you. They've been working all day. They've been working hard. They made their favorite recipe. And all you have to do is sit down and eat. All you have to do is sit down and eat. Well, God is saying, I have this life prepared for you. I have these plans for you. I have these good works prepared be before you were even formed in your mother's womb. It's only for you to walk in them. Okay, finally, we get to the them. I believe these are the works that God is talking about. Like I said earlier, I believe that coming here and being a pastor and being the resident director at New Heart Place was a good work that God wanted me to walk in. But it's not always something big like that. And I, I'm afraid that sometimes we get hung up on that. Maybe it's going to Africa. Maybe it's doing this. Maybe it's ministering here is the work that God's talking about. I want to talk about the works that God has prepared for you to walk in every single day, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter how little or how much influence you have. These are things that God has for all of us to walk in. And if you hear one here that seems kind of difficult to you, just remember, it's not you somehow white knuckling it or deciding to be this or that. It's the love of Christ in you giving you what you need to walk this out. Here it is. Speak truth. God says, walk this out. This is one of the thems I want you to walk in. I want you to be a person who walks in the truth, who speaks truth everywhere you go with everybody you meet. Even when the truth is, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'm sorry, I didn't handle that well. I'm sorry, I was selfish. Even when the truth is that. One of the thems that God wants you to walk in is truth. He wants you to speak truth. Me too. But remember, it's not you suddenly deciding, I'm just going to be a person of truth. No, it's the, fact, it's the fact that you believe that God loves you. That gives you the ability to receive that love and let it change you so that you no longer lie to your brother. You walk in truth. Ooh, I'm going to have to go really fast. Because i got a long list. Be kind. Even when somebody has hurt you. Even when somebody has wronged you. Even when somebody has been a slacker in some situation. Be kind. God calls you to walk in kindness. But remember, he says, the fact that he loves you will make you able. It will change you to where you will be kind even in situations where you might feel like you have the right to be unkind. Forgive each other. God calls us to walk in forgiveness. That's a them. That's a big them. Walk in them. I have prepared this great work for you to do. It's called forgiveness. It's one of the greatest works I have prepared you to do is to forgive each other. And you get a chance to do this great work every day with each other. 
Will you walk in it? Or will you walk in your own way of unforgiveness? Because there's a good reason. It's justified. It hurt. You can continue to walk in unforgiveness and go your own way. Or you can walk in this them too. Choose to forgive. Let the love of God in your heart cause you to forgive others. Consider others first. Goes right along with being kind. Maybe a little deeper way of looking at it, though. Consider others first. One of those passages in Scripture I really struggled with, especially during those three years I shared with you about, where it was frustrating because I was trying to fill, you know, obey rules and fulfill list. And it said, consider others first. I think there's one translation that even says, consider others better than yourself. Oh, that hurts. My pride and my ego all had to die for me to walk this out. And it has to die daily for me to continue to walk this out, that I'm going to consider others first. I'm going to consider others before myself. God says that his love, if you will let it, will cause you to walk like that. You won't have to strive and struggle to do it. His love in you, if you really believe it's as powerful as his word says it is, will cause you to walk like that. Let's, let's move on. Confess Jesus to others. As a matter of fact, the word of God says that if Jesus is in you, if he's truly your Lord and Savior, you can't help it. It just comes out. You can't hold it in. It has had such an effect on you that you want to tell everybody what happened, who did this. He says you can walk this out. Oh, you may not be, be Billy Graham and an evangelist up in front of thousands and thousands. You may not even be like me up here in front of you, you guys tonight ever. But you definitely have it in you because you have the love of Christ in you. You have it in you to tell others about Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. That's called, that's a big them to walk in. Walk in this them. Be gentle, compassionate, and patient. Again, back on the kind, considering others first. Be gentle, compassionate and patient seem like little ones and you're probably going well he, he lumped all three of those into one so maybe they're not quite as equally important as the rest no they just kind of roll together they kind of ride together if you will patience compassionate and gentle God's love if you will allow it to will cause you to be that way with everybody you deal with. You're not going to be that way because you like them. You're not going to be that way because they did something nice or said something nice to you. You're going to be that way because God's love in you causes you to want to be that way, to have that compassion for that person, to want to be gentle and patient with them because God's love was so compassionate, so gentle, and so patient with you. Hope when it is hopeless. God says we're to be a people of hope. We're not the ones who give up. We're not the one who, speak doom, who speaks doomsday over a situation. We're not the ones that profess death and give it up and it's hopeless. We're the ones who hope, not only, not only when it looks like everything's going our way and it's actually going to work out, but we hope when it's hopeless. Because the love of Christ in me has given me a hope. And, and, and I, I've experienced that hope in my own life, and I've also experienced that hope from the other side. See, when I was hopeless, there was my wife and a lot of other good people who did not lose hope. And they heard God saying, no hope when it's hopeless. We are called to be a people of hope. Don't give up your hope. It doesn't matter how long you've been praying, how long you've been fighting your own personal demons. If you believe that God loves you like we've talked about tonight, you can hope against all odds. You can hope when it's totally hopeless. Because God's love gives you the strength and the ability, and it changes you into somebody who has hope. Okay, last one. Believe the best about each other. This is from Corinthians, you know, 13, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. A lot of these are from there, in fact. But this one especially touched my heart when God gave me this to speak about tonight. Believe the best about each other. See, God has called us to be a people who are about unity, not about division, 
God has called us to be a people who love each other, not always because of, but quite often in spite of what we've done and said to each other. God calls us to be a people that bears with each other, that believes the best about each other, that speaks out the best over each other. We don't speak death over each other. We don't speak criticism. We don't tear each other down. We're a people who bears with each other and believes the best about each other because God's love in us says that's what God did with me. Oh, did he ever bear with me? Did he ever believe things about me that when my wife told her, told me, oh, God said this to me about you, I laughed. I said, honey, I, I'm sure that God didn't say that to you. You may have wanted to hear that, but God didn't say that. And she said, oh, yes, he did. And she said, I'm going to believe it because God's told her something that was the best. And she chose to believe the best. Not what she saw right in front of her face. Not what she saw right before her eyes. But what God told her, believe the best. Would you do that with each other? Would you just, everybody in your life, begin. And I'm not talking about stick your head in the sand and get taken to the cleaners by somebody kind of stuff. Please don't say Pastor Mike told me to give somebody a million dollars because I had to believe the best about them. I'm talking about in your heart. How you treat them. How you think about them. How you talk about them. Believe the best. Bear with them when they fall short. Because you know what? There's a lot of us doing that with you. We're bearing with you when you fall short. We're believing the best about you. We're praying for victory in every area of your life. We got to bear with one another, you guys. That's the part of the unity thing of the church being a body that we don't always celebrate so much. You see, part of being a body, part of having unity, not division, is that we bear with each other's shortcomings. We overlook them and we love each other in spite of. I want to remind you of the, of the song that I had Lloyd repeat a little bit. He says that, that reckless love of God. This nice little list that I gave you tonight, please don't go out and try to do all these things because you, got, you want God to love you or you want God to accept you. Please decide tonight that you are loved. Decide to believe with everything in you tonight that you are loved by God. And I guarantee you, as a matter of fact, I'll give you a Pastor Ron stamped on the forehead money back guarantee that if you will decide to believe that, if you will decide to believe that God loves you, when you go out of here tonight, these are going to start to happen. You will not have to even keep a checklist to go over and check off. They will start to happen. And here's why Pastor Ron and I can make you that guarantee, because the Word of God says so. It says that if you will accept the love of Christ, if you will call Him Lord and Savior, He will change you from the inside out, and these are the things that it will look like. Oh, the rest of the story! The rest of the story! So anyway, he ran off the cliff, hung on to a branch on a manzanita bush about 30 feet above the rock, screaming. My brother was still on the other side. He ran up that side of the hill. I ran up the other side of the hill, and we both got to him at the same time just as he let go of the manzanita bush, and we grabbed him and stopped him from falling. And then we stood there on the hill picking hornets off of him and out of his hair and everything. He got stung like 40 times. And fortunately, Rita's aunt lived about two miles away from that lake. And we went to her house real quick and stuck him in an ice bath and put mud on all the stings. And he survived it. He's a great kid today. But that's the, other, that's the rest of the story. Thank you for reminding me. God bless you. Mm -hmm.